like to welcome everyone to another Sunday service of Christ Reformed Church. I'm Pastor Ferguson, and it's great to be gathered together in the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, God is an awesome God, and uh, He does awesome things for His children. One of those things is, uh, the main thing, uh, is turning us into the image and likeness of Christ. So, you know, that's a lifelong process. And it's not something that happens in one uh, year or two or three or five or ten. It's really a lifetime uh, because it involves the, the putting off of the old man, the old nature, all those sinful habits and inclinations and vices that have had a hold on us for so many years of our lives and especially those years prior to our conversion uh, to Christ and you know they hang on for a while uh, a long while in fact there it's a lifelong battle and struggle and today uh, I'm going to be speaking about uh, dealing with temptation and not just lust but anger, uh, you know, unrighteous anger, um, coveting and greed and uh, temptation uh, comes in many different forms and fashions. Uh, we are tempted to all different kinds of vices uh, in this world and uh, it is our duty to overcome those vices um, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Get over there. You, know, you have to subdue that old nature. Um, animals, of course, you know, they just have one nature. That's the nature of their own kind. And, um, you know, they don't have the Holy Spirit uh, in them helping them to resist uh, temptation. Uh, they're just going to do what uh, they've been designed to do and um, unfortunately they're under the curse of sin as well so sometimes they do some bad stuff. Uh, they can hurt people you know and do things that are not uh, good or beneficial. Uh, not to get off track though, uh, I'd like to invite your attention to uh, go to God with me in a word of prayer and then we'll begin. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come unto you this day in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you for all that you are, all that you've done, all you continue to do uh, for us and through us. Uh, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. Please forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity, creating us clean hearts and renew right minds within us. Uh, Lord, we just ask you of creating us clean hearts and renew right minds within us. You will wash away uh, those vices and sins that have had a grip on us uh, for so long. Lord, you remove them that we uh, can walk in victory after your uh, image and likeness and in your image and likeness. We know we have the victory. We have the mind of Christ. So we pray and ask you, oh, grant us the grace to overcome these things, to uh, submit to your word and to surrender these things uh, at the foot of your throne. Uh, we just pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. You will strengthen our faith and trust in you and our obedience unto thy holy and righteous word. Ask all these things. Be with the little children, all of your little ones. Protect them from abortion, uh, from child abuse and neglect and malnourishment and mistreatment. Uh, God, we pray your hand of uh, blessing and special grace and help upon your little ones. Uh, they need you most, Lord. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. We pray for those in authority above us. You may bless them with wisdom that we can live quiet and peaceful lives here on earth. 
Christ's name, amen. So, today, of course, like I said, I'm going to be talking about dealing with temptation. Um, <clears throat> David, you know, he said in uh, the book of Psalms, in uh, 15 and 16, other songs. We'll just take a look at a few of them. Uh, Psalm 15. This is David speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course. That's what makes uh, Scripture the Word of God. It's because it was given by inspiration. Okay, that means God read it out. God gave the command um, for it to be written. God dictated everything that was written and that's how we got the Bible. It is <clears throat> through the divine inspiration and sovereign um, tea of God. So here David is speaking, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. And whose eye is a vile person is condemned, contemned, uh, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. Uh, he putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the end, that he that doeth these things shall never be moved. That's kind of going to be the theme of my sermon, um, is um, how not to be moved. You know, that's what gets us <clears throat> off track, is when we're moved off track. You know, a train is um, going to its destination so long as the train is on the tracks. But once the train gets off the tracks, then you have a crash, a collision, you know, a derailment, and the train is no longer able to continue on its <clears throat> journey to its destination. So the devil, one of his um, devices is to get us off track, to derail us. Does this through many different avenues. Uh, one of them is the temptation uh, to the lust. Okay, and lust, of course, you know, it can be lust, sexual lust. Uh, there can be lust to anger, a lust to greed, a lust to coveting, a lust to lying and deceit. Uh, there are many different avenues that lust can take. Um, so he entices us as lust is <clears throat> an enticement and we have to um, we have to enter into that lust. We have to succumb to it. We have to be enticed as Eve was enticed uh, by the <clears throat> serpent. And uh, you know the story. She took the forbidden fruit. The fruit that God has said, do not eat. Well, uh, she was enticed. And even though she knew that it was wrong to do it, her lust for that apple, or that, I shouldn't say apple, we don't know <laughs> what kind of fruit it was. Uh, but that lust for that forbidden fruit uh, became stronger than her desire to obey the Word of God. Okay, and that's what happens to us. When we get enticed by lust, let's say sexual lust, the desire to fulfill or gratify that sexual lust becomes, for the Christian, uh, stronger uh, when, we, when we enter into it Cross the line, you know, no, I can't really say where that line is, uh, 
but you know where it is, and I know where it is. I can't say where it is for you, and you can't really say where it is for me, but it's not a good idea, I can say this, to be viewing pornography, pornographic images, uh, because you're tempting yourself when you do that. You know, these little phones here can be a blessing or a curse. You have to decide what you're going to do with these and how you're going to use these phones. Are you going to use your phone for the glory of God? Or are you going to use it to fulfill the lust of your flesh? And when you do that, when you use it for evil purposes, you're defeating yourself. Okay? You're derailing yourself. Right? The devil puts the temptation out there for you. You know it's there. I mean, all you have to do is type in one simple word and you have images uh, before you. And that's what the devil likes to do. He likes to put images in our mind and before us. So when we see something, you know, it creates a mental uh, image and it stirs the passions. You know, when I see aborted babies, that makes me very angry. You know, and I, I think that's a good anger. That's a righteous anger. Um, but I'm just using this for an example. Uh, I, I just, I get angry when I see that because that's shedding innocent blood. Right? It's not right. That should not be allowed. Thank God in, here in Arkansas, at least as far as I know, the latest law they passed the bill is to abandon all abortions um, except for when a mother's life is in danger. And even in that case, I would, if it was me, I would say you still should not abort the child. You know, the child is, is younger, is more innocent, has more years to live than the mother, so it's, it would be better, in my opinion, to save the child even if the mother has to die, you know, because the child is younger. The child has more years to live. The mother has less. Anyway, that's a whole other different um, discussion. But So, um, being moved, being derailed, okay, and I, I use the sexual thing uh, for an example, sexual lust. James, of course, we're going to get there, speaks of that. Uh, every man is carried away by his own lust. And when he's enticed and lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, death. So the goal is to not be moved. <clears throat> um, okay, so Psalm 16:8 says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Right? Job says, the righteous also shall hold on his way. Okay. The righteous shall hold on his way. He shall not be moved. When you're on the right track, you know it. Okay? And... You also know it when you uh, get off the right track. You know, imagine yourself driving and riding in a car, and uh, there's an, an exit that says, you know, free, um, uh, free sex or, or uh, free uh, money, you know, free power. Free, uh, you know, whatever it is. But you know that you cannot get off that main road. Because if you do, you're going to miss your appointment. Right? Uh, so you need to stay on the road. Stay on the path. If you get off, you're going to miss your appointment. What's your point? Well, I'm going to say, well, your blessing. We'll just say it's your blessing. You have a 
an end to get to, it's, and there's a blessing waiting for you. Right? Now, there are many blessings that we forfeit and miss in this life. I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about the blessings in this life we forfeit and we miss because we got off track. We derailed ourselves, okay? Or we, we were enticed and we took by the devil or the, the world and we uh, took the bait. We succumbed to that enticement, okay? To that. And it derailed us and we forfeited our blessings. Many blessings. I can't tell you how many blessings I've forfeited because of sin. I'm just being honest with you. I think you would have to say the same thing if you're honest with yourself too. Um, but the goal is to uh, not be moved. Okay, that's how you deal with temptation. We're going to look at uh, how Christ dealt with temptation. Now, as I turn to Matthew chapter 26 okay um, we all know the story of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane okay um, they had just uh, taken the supper right this was uh Pass overnight. Uh, they had just uh, had the Passover together, and now they they go out uh, to pray in the wilderness. You know, they go for an evening walk uh, after the Passover, and uh, um, this would be on a Friday, of course. And it says in uh, Jesus, in verse 36, in Matthew 26, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray yonder. He took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. Jesus, of course, is, he knows his time is at hand. He's only hours, literally hours away from his own death on the cross. Imagine if that was you, knowing what was about to happen to you, knowing that you were about to be um, whipped and lashed and beat up and spit upon and mocked and had a, a, a crown of thorns placed on your head and, and having to go uh, to the cross and get your, your hands nailed through and your ankles and, and you know, hang on the cross um, for six hours from nine till three. Imagine, you know, that's just the physical side, but the spiritual, Jesus was about to face and drink and swallow and endure the wrath of God, uh, which was poured out uh, on him from, uh, in behalf of our sins, or because of our sins, the sins of all whom the Father gave unto him were poured out wrath of God was poured out upon him. We don't know what he endured. You know, I don't think we ever will know what the hell, and I'm just being frank with you, I'm not trying to use that as a curse word, but the, hell, the literal hell that Jesus went through on our behalf. I don't know if we'll ever, I don't think we'll ever understand that how bad the torment was. You know. At any rate, he asked his three, you know, 
inner disciples to uh, to watch with him. And uh, and then it says he went a little further and fell on his face. He didn't just fall on his knees. It's a you know many of the pictures um, depict him as being on his knees, kneeling on a rock, but he was on his face on the ground, literally his face to the ground in agony. Uh, when the person is in agony, they don't generally just fall down on their knees. They fall down to the ground completely on their face or on their back. Um, in this case, Jesus is, is on the ground with his face to the ground. The, the ground that he made he created, now he's face to face with it, in, in agony, uh, in great torment, in suffering. Um, and it says that he prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. So see how Jesus is dealing with temptation? The Jesus experienced the temptation to not go to the cross. That was his temptation. Right? The, the human side of Jesus was not wanting to go through that. I mean, would you? I know I wouldn't want to go through that kind of, of death and, and suffering and abuse, you know, nobody in their right mind would. So it's not that Jesus is not being sinful and not wanting to do the will of God, but his human side is being sensible about the matter. But notice the divine side takes over immediately and corrects the human side. Okay. The divine reasoning correcting the human reasoning. The human reasoning is saying, no, this doesn't make sense. Why should I go to the cross? But the divine reasoning says, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Okay. So in your situation, the human side is saying, I can't go through this. I don't want to go through. It's going to be too painful, too agonizing to let go of that sin or to let go of whatever you're holding on to that you're not supposed to be holding or maybe it's a fear of sharing the gospel, you know, persecution. Um, it's, you're not doing something that you should be doing. Maybe you're not reading your Bible. You're afraid of what you might find in there. Okay, you're not praying. Uh, you're not fellowshipping uh, with other Christians. You're not. You're not communing uh, with God. Those are some of the things you're not doing that you should be doing. Maybe you have an addiction to TV. You, you can't let it go. You, the human side says, I need TV. You know, I need to be watching my favorite shows and sports. But the divine side says, no. I need to be spending time uh, reading in God's Word and reading godly books about God's Word. They will help me grow in Christian grace. Let me grow in the image and likeness of Christ. So we're always faced with that situation that is the human um, perspective, the human reasoning, the human emotion that what 
whatever you may be attached to versus the divine reason, the, the divine counsel, and the divine outlook. Yes, there's going to be pain. Yes, there will be tears when you have to let go of something that you don't want to let go of. You know, whatever, maybe drugs or alcohol or pornography or fornication or adultery or lying or cheating or stealing. Whatever it is, maybe you have too many pets. You need to let go of, of those. You know, maybe you're bad situation or relationship you need to let go of. And you know it's going to be painful. You know it's going to hurt. And you need to let go of your old life. If you haven't been born again, you need to let go of that. Of your old sinful lifestyle. You need to come to the Lord. And be born again. Receive a new nature. I remember the day I got born again. Yeah, it was a terrifying experience. Uh, you know, it just kind of happened. It came on me all of a sudden, but it was it was sad. Uh, for a moment, you know, yes, I, I cried because I, I hadn't confessed my sin for 22 years of my life. I didn't know what it was. You know, I knew a part of me died that day, November 6, 1994. You know, I wasn't crying because I died. I don't think I was. I was mainly, I was, the tears that were in my eyes was because uh, of my own sin. I was crying over my own sin. You know, I couldn't believe it. And at the same time, my tears were turned into joy and happiness because I knew they were forgiven. I knew that at that day that Jesus had died for my sins. There's always a letting go uh, process and when you let go of something that is near or dear to you, yes it's going to make you sad temporarily, but you get through it because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus got through this Garden of Gethsemane, right? And you can get through whatever you're going through as well. Let's look and see how he, what happens here. He says, um, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Not my will, thine be done. That's what you got to remember. Not my human emotion, not my human will, not my human reasoning, okay. not my human attachment be done, but thy will be done. God wants to free you up. Okay. The only person holding you back is you. Maybe because of fear, you don't want to go through the loss. You don't want to have to start a new life over again. Well, you never had a new life if you're not born again. Right? Maybe you're going to lose some friends. You will lose friends if you truly surrender your life to the Lord. But you'll have a friend that will never leave you for all eternity. Jesus Christ. Right? A friend you can count on for all eternity. And you'll gain other Christian friends along the way. You know. But let's see what happens. In verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. Uh, he couldn't depend on his disciples. You can't depend on your friends. Just like I was just saying. You know, your friends are, are unreliable. They can be unreliable. Not always going to be there for you. Can't always be there with you, but Jesus is a friend that never leaves you. Okay, He's always there for us. Why? Because He lives. He lives in us. 
The Holy Spirit. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ lives in us. So we always have Him with us. We can endure and overcome any situation, any temptation in life, and never be moved, never be derailed. Because the Lord is with us, in us. We have everything we need in Christ. All the power and strength and endurement and perseverance is all in Christ. And He's in us and we're in Him. That gives us complete victory over every situation in life. Over every circumstance. And he saith unto Peter, Why, what, could ye not watch with me one hour? <laughs> Here he's just saying, one hour, Peter. You, you couldn't endure for one hour. You couldn't pray with me and watch me one hour. Well, the, hu the human can't do it. The, <laughs> the, the flesh is weak. We're about to see Jesus saying that. The flesh is weak. is strong. Peter, you know, he thought he was Mr. Macho and strong. He really wasn't. He didn't have much strength, spiritual strength at all. Okay. Jesus says in verse 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So the two ingredients to avoid entering into temptation are watching and praying. Right? Being watchful, being prayerful. That's what keeps us from entering into temptation. What does it mean to be watchful? Well, it means to always be in the Word of God. To always have the Word before us, like David said, I have set thee, I've always set thee before me that I shall not be moved. You know, if you have the Scripture always before you, you're going to have a hard time, you're not going to really be interested to be looking at pornography and the Bible at the same time. That's Those two don't go together too well. Or being angry, unrighteous anger, you know, losing your lid, your temper, while you have the Word of God open and you're just reading it. The, the Word of God will quell your spirit. I like that word, quell, because it means calm down, subdue. You don't need drugs or alcohol. You know, many, that's sad many Christians turn to that. They say, well, I, I have anxiety issues, so I need to have some drugs or alcohol. I have pain in my body, so I need to drink or I need to smoke marijuana to deal with the pain. Well, you're, you're turning to the things of the world rather than to the Lord. Do you not think the Lord can heal you of that or of those things? Do you not think the Lord can comfort you uh, with the pain or anxiety? You know, the Bible says, cast all your care upon him. Be anxious for nothing, or he careth for you. You're not taking God at his word. You're turning to man. You're turning to the things of the world. Right? David said, don't put your trust in horses and chariots. But don't put your trust in the Lord. <clears throat> we hurt ourselves. We turn to the things of the world. That's not the right direction. So watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. It doesn't say you're not going to be tempted. Jesus did not say that. Jesus himself was tempted. Here he's tempted not to go to the cross. In chapter 4 he was tempted by the devil to turn the stone to bread. Um, he was tempted to jump off the cliff that God might catch him. Or the angels might bear him up. And he was also uh, tempted to bow down and worship the devil in order that he might have all the kingdoms of the earth. And I'm sure there were many, many other temptations throughout Christ's life 
those are just a few that are recorded that maybe Christ will tell us when we get to heaven all the things he was tempted with and he overcame them all why can't we and he lives in us well, it's because the flesh is weak when we turn to the flesh we're going to succumb to the flesh when we turn to the Spirit, then we will succumb to the things of the Spirit. So the carnal mind is at enmity with God, right? but the spiritual mind is life. The carnal mind is death. The spiritual mind is life. Okay? Um, So the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah, that's an interesting statement. The spirit is willing. Willing for what? They're willing to do the will of God. But the flesh cannot. Right? So the spirit of God is willing to do the will of God. Did you catch that? The Spirit of God is willing to do the will of God. But the flesh is weak. The flesh cannot. The flesh is not only not willing, but it cannot do the will of God. They're in opposition one to another. You have to be Spirit-filled in order to do the will of God. There's a story in the Gospels of the uh, Jesus sends the disciples out, and there is a man uh, who has a son who has been demon possessed, and uh, the disciples try to cast out the demon, and they cannot. And they, they, Jesus, of course, does cast the demons out, and the disciples asked him, why could not we cast them out? And Jesus said, well, this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. They were not filled with the Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it, there are many vices that you have in your life and mine we have to be filled with the Spirit of God. I mean, we have to be filled with the Word of God. We have to be yielding ourselves to the Word of God in order to overcome those strongholds, those vices, whatever they are. They're not going to come forth except by prayer and fasting. Unless we give ourselves completely over to the will of God. The Spirit of God has to take control of our lives, of our decisions, okay, of our will. We have to become one with the will of God. We have to submit ourselves to the Word of God in order to do the will of God. Okay. And that takes time and maturity. Um, so then verse 42 says and Jesus went away again a second time and prayed saying oh my father if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it thy will be done thy will be done if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it Thy will be done. Right? The, the, the vice, the, the temptation, the situation, the bad situation you're in, is not going to go away until you yield yourself over to the Lord. Until you yield your will over to His will except you drink it. 
except you'd be willing to go through the pain, the, the suffering, the tears that are going to come with letting go of that vice or that are going to come by doing what you're not doing now. Okay. They're going to you have to drink it, my friend. I have to drink it. I, I have to go through it. You have to go through it. The pain, the suffering that's going to go with letting go of what we're not supposed to have. Or it's going to go with taking hold on that which we are supposed to have. Some things we need to let go of. Other things we need to take hold of. Okay. And both things may and most likely will cause some form of pain and suffering. But there will be a blessing in the end. You'll be glad you did. And Jesus was very glad he went to the cross. Because look where he's at now. Look at all the children he has in heaven. That he gained, that he won. With his obedience. Are you willing to obey? As he said to Peter, do you love me more than these when you're fishing? Because I'm going to make you a fisher of men. But you have to let go of the fishing pole. And I'm going to give you the word of God. I'm going to give you a shepherd's staff instead of a fishing pole. How about that, Peter? How about that? You can catch men. But as long as you're holding on to what the things you love, then you can't do God's will. You can't obtain what He has for you. You've got to let go. And you've got to be courageous to take hold on whatever He has for you. Some people just live in fear. They don't go anywhere because they're too afraid. They're too scared. It's like the parable of the talents. The one that re he, he was only given one talent, but he was so scared, so fearful, and, and perhaps he was lazy. In fact, I know he was. he was. He was slothful. He didn't do anything with it. It came time to give back to the master with profit. He had no profit because he was slothful and fearful and lazy. You can't be like that. Right? If you, you know, if you have a problem with laziness or sloth, um, procrastination, that's not good. Ask God to remove that from you. Okay? And He will. We only have so much time to do God's will here on earth. We need to be busy about it and do what we need to do. Okay? And get over it. Move forward. Let go of the weight. As Hebrews talks about, that is besetting you. It's too heavy to bear. You can't bear all that. Whatever your sin is, you're holding on to. It's tearing you down. It's dragging you down. You can't move forward. You got to let go of it. Get, you know, cry the tears, endure the suffering, the hardship, the good soldier of Christ. If you don't let go, it's going to take you under. Imagine trying to swim with, you know, a, a 200 pound uh, or even a 100 pound backpack on your back. 
you ain't going to swim. You're going to sink. You got to take that thing off in order to swim. And that's what we need to do. Take the weight, those sin, sins off. Amen. It says he came at and found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. You know, many times uh, we have to continue to pray. You know, over and over. Jesus did three times, went back to his spot. Great agony. Get through it. God's will be done. Now there's other scriptures that I could point out. Note in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has taken you with that which is common unto man. God is faithful will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape. The way of escape is submitting yourself to the word of God, to the will of God. Ephesians 4.29 uh, Be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Right? Don't fly off the handle. That's unrighteous. It's unrighteous anger. That's not pleasing to the Holy Spirit. We're to be under control. Our spirits would be under control of the Holy Spirit. Not to be, you know, getting all wrathful and angry and revengeful flying off the handle and rage some people go into a rage that's sin that's sinful and look what they do they do some some crazy stuff end up getting thrown in jail or prison sometimes for life because they went in a rage So our spirits need to be subdued, not to enter into temptation, you know, lust, and anger, greed, coveting. Rebuke those things. Okay. Be content with what God gives you. Okay. And, um, you know, if we do these things, if you spend time, you need to spend time in the Word of God every day if you don't want to be moved. Now, if you want to be moved, like James says, a double-minded man, you want to be tossed all over the place, to and fro, like a ship on the ocean, then just stay out of God's Word. Right? Don't pray. And just watch TV all day and night and get nothing done. Be lazy. And you're going to be moved. All day long, you're going to follow false preachers. Right? You're going to be talking about health, wealth, and prosperity because that's what you're trying to get is wealthy and healthy. And, you know, one thing amazes me everybody's trying to stay alive physically, but there's only a very small percentage of people who are preparing themselves for eternity, who are, who are um, conditioning themselves spiritually everybody is seems like trying to stay alive. even the animal world tries to stay alive you know that's just in their nature but they can't prepare themselves for eternity they're not moral agents like we are they just live for a little while and then they die their spirit goes back to God But we need to prepare ourselves and number our days and be wise and not foolish in our decision making. You know, we are where we are now because of the decisions that we've made in the past. Okay. And you're going to continue being where you are 
because of every decision that you make and that I make. And our decisions are what determine our life. You understand that? So may we make good decisions, godly decisions, and not foolish ones. Not be governed by the flesh, but by the spirit. Have our temples and bodies under control. And God can control us, not like wild horses. You know, we want to be under control. God says, come, we come. God says, go, we go. We're ready and available for his service. Amen. And God bless you.